Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are learning about stiffness matrix method of analyzing a continuous beam. So, let us first learn what is stiffness. Stiffness is defined as the force required for unit displacement. So, we are calculating the force that is required for unit displacement. So, the stiffness is denoted by a letter K. K is equals to F by delta. So stiffness method is also known as displacement method or equilibrium method. Let us now know about this method with an example. See this is a given continuous beam. This is a 3 span continuous beam having fixed ends at both A and D and it is on roller supports at B and C. Now step 1 in the stiffness matrix method is determining the kinematic indeterminacy. So we have a formula for that. It is dk that is degree of kinematic indeterminacy is equals to 3j minus m minus r where j is joints m is members r is reactions so 3 into joints that is 1 2 3 4 4 joints minus 3 members a b b c c d minus reactions 3 at so we have total uh, 4 joints so at this we will be calculating the reactions we are neglecting the axial deformations so when neglecting these reactions we will get we are neglecting the axial deformation we will get one reaction the vertical reaction in moment the vertical reaction in moment here we will get a vertical reaction vertical reaction ok and one horizontal reaction along its length so it would be 7 so 3j minus m minus r it is 2 or we can also get this like uh, at fixed we know there would be no moment possible at roller like when we are neglecting the axial deformation one one uh, degree of freedom will be given at each roller support that is 2 ok next for unknown displacements independent displacement components are rotations at B and C ok now we are taking that 2 as rotation at B and rotation at see see we are also giving the notations this is all clockwise like this is causing all this loading is causing bc span to sag okay next we are calculating the fixed gain moments of this we are assuming the whole beam to be fixed so mfab would be wab square by l square as it is an eccentric point load this would be a this would be b okay see this 2 meters is A and this is B so it is the nearer end if we are taking AB so near to A this would be A and the far end far end distance would be squared so B square by whole span square here in MFBA when we are taking BA it is B into A square A squared next for BC that is it is having a central point load so directly WL by 8 WL by 8 next taking MFCD and DC so here we are having again eccentric point load taking the same formula we will be calculating MFCD and MFDC all these are fixed gain moments now I will tell you what is F1L F1L is MFBA plus MFBC that is the reactions the resultant reaction that is at MFB that is uh, at a joint B we are calculating the resultant force See when we are calculating at B, we have two spans like B is uh, B is in between AB span and BC span. So when we are when we want the resultant force at this B, we have to take BA and BC. So that that is MFBA plus MFBC would give this one. Next for C, it would be MFCB plus MFCD. And yeah, please make sure the left hand for a span the left hand would be the negative one right hand support would be positive so the left hand one as it is negative it would be anti-clockwise this would be clockwise so we got this reactions now we will apply unit moment unit moment at 1 and 2 I will tell you what is this so now we are calculating the K elements that is stiffness elements for the stiffness matrix as we got DK that is degree of kinematic indeterminacy as 2 this order of this flexibility matrix sorry stiffness matrix would be 2 by 2 it would be 2 by 2 ok so k11 
when I am telling k11 that is the first one would represent the coordinate at which we are calculating this and the second one would represent at which the load is applied okay so k11 we are calculating k11 is at this point so this is 11 so we need to consider both a b span and b c span as it is in between a b and b c span so we will be calculating at both a b and b c when both are same that is when we are calculating and also giving the load at same support at same ordinate then this would be 4 e i by l but when i am taking k21 that is load is applied at 1 but we are taking at 2 we are calculating this at 2 that is see both 1 and 2 are in between like they are connected with a member bc so we will take it only bc span okay and when we are taking k21 this would again be divided by carryover factor so we will divide it by 2 so 4 ei by l so divided by 2 means 2 2 would be cancelled this is 2 ei by l okay again when we are taking k22 both are same so we can write 4 ei by l as 2 2 is having this is 2 2 it is in between both spans bc and cd so we will take bc and cd but when we are taking k12 again this is connected by only single member that is bc okay now we'll get the stiffness matrix we know everything is multiplied by i over here so we'll take the i1 common k delta is equals to f minus fl f is the external force acting okay since no displacement at b and c so we are okay we will not be calculating that so this is fl fl is wherever we are calculating this at that point so f1l would become i told you if it, it is equals to mfba plus mfbc the one we have calculated here f1l and f2l okay so this is the one fl matrix is that one okay delta matrix is theta b and theta c the one we have to calculate right now this is theta b so we need delta that is k inverse k would become inverse of 0 minus fl 0 minus fl matrix so this is k matrix which is inverse right now and this is fl matrix remember if we get positive here that would be if it is negative it would be positive okay because we have minus over here okay next we can calculate it by applying this formula or we can just do it simply using calculator we can do this using scientific calculator now we will get the theta b theta c as we have taken the redundance as this one so the f1 l f2 l we are getting the theta b and theta c over here once we get those thetas we will now be calculating the final end moments the one we calculated before are fixed end moments so it is not m a b it is sorry it is not m f a b it is m a b m a b is equals to m f a b the first one we have calculated the fixed gain moments so that is the one plus 2 e i by l 2 times of it is a b right 2 times of first term a b means 2 times of theta a plus theta b ok next m b a it is m f b a plus 2 e i by l this is the formula it would not change ok this 2 times of theta b that is first term plus theta of the second term and it is mba so it would be mfba only and 2 ei by l all the ei and l would be of span ba only ok so we will be calculating in this way we will be calculating the final end moments now once we get the final end moments we will apply this see this is the final end moment we have got two moments and this is the load load given in the question so applying this we, this is the mab mab is this one so we'll just represent it in a diagrammatic representation like you give it a diagrammatic representation of this okay so now see now we are taking ra and rb1 taking ab span with the given loading we'll also be applying the moments we have calculated just now we'll calculate rb1 ra that is rb1 into 3 this would be anti clockwise 
and also the 3.39 would be anti clockwise so all this to the left hand side and in the right hand side we will calculate the uh, clockwise terms 100 into 2 okay and this is 82.058 as it is already a moment we are not multiplying it with any distance now taking the span bc this is our b1 this is our b2 okay this is the moment we have got this is a 200 kilo newton next same way rc1 into 4 81.96 all clockwise terms one side or anti clockwise terms another side we will calculate rc1 next summation f y is equal to 0 that is upward loads is equal to downward loads you will get the rb2 okay now in the similar way we will also calculate the reactions in this man cd so we get rc and rd ra rb so remember rb is equals to rb1 plus rb2 that is rb1 from ab span and rb2 from bc span we will get rb1 and rb2 so we will just add that to get rb so rc is equals to rc1 plus rc2 now we are just developing the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram see i will tell you roughly this is ra as there will be no nodes here in between it is linear and again there is 100 kilonewton load acting it would come 100 kilonewton downward again it will go linear till here again at rb we have two two times that is rb1 and rb2 after that it will be linear again and now we have 200 kilonewton load acting downward so again that 200 kilonewton downward it will be coming down and then again we have rc1 rc2 it is linear again this is the diagram this is again the 150 kilonewton load coming downward this is rd so rb rb we have like bending moment diagram we have two types one because of the loading and second because of this all the reactions we have calculated from the final end moments okay this is w a b by l due to eccentric point load okay this is w l by 4 as it is in the center next this is again w a b by l these are all r a r b that is r b 1 plus r b 2 r c plus r c 1 plus r c 2 this is r d okay this is the development of shear force and bending moment diagram Thank you for watching the video. Please like, share, comment the channel. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, share, comment to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.